So we have successfully authenticated the user with the user ID and password in our previous video. Next, we need to generate JSON web token that can be used for further authentication and authorization in our application. Let's see how to generate this token next. So we are returning this dummy token value at present in our API uh, once the user ID and password is matched. Let's add a method uh, to create JWT. As we need a user information to generate this token, take user as input parameter here. And to generate this token, we need a security key that will be used to encrypt the token. There are two kinds of encryptions, uh, symmetric and asymmetric. In symmetric encryption, a single key can be used uh, for both encrypting and decrypting the token. While asymmetric encryption, I use a pairs of related keys, a public and private key. The public key, uh, which is accessible to everyone, uh, is what is used to encrypt a plain text. And to decrypt, uh, you need to hold the private key. In asymmetric encryption, the private key is only shared uh, with the key initiator, since its security need to be maintained. Although asymmetric encryption offers a high level of security, as compared to the symmetric encryption, but it is more complicated and it needs more time as well to decrypt the text. If we are using this architecture uh, where two parties are involved, uh, we should use asymmetric encryption. But for this tutorial, uh, we are not going to use this architecture and both encryption and decryption are done uh, on the same server. So we are going to use a symmetric encryption. So we need a symmetric security key and bring it from microsoft.identitymodel.token as a parameter we need to provide the byte array of our security key here and to get the byte array uh, of our security key we can use encoding uh, bring it from system.txt it provides a different encoding methods and uh, as our security key can contain special characters from different languages let's use this utf8 and using the get bytes method, we can get the byte array of our secret key. We'll put this key in app settings uh, later in this video. But for now, just type it here. Now the second part that we need to pass in payload of token is claims. A claim are the piece of information about the user. We need to take it as an array of claims and bring it from system.security.claims. Here we can add multiple claims and pass the various information about the user. Let's set claim type dot name to username and set claim types dot name identifier to the user dot id. Convert it to string as it accepts string parameter. I mistakenly used the hyphen here uh, instead of using equal sign. Next, we need signing credentials uh, to define the secret key and algorithm we are going to use for digital signature. Pass the security key here and security algorithm. Let's use HMAC SHA256 signature. We can use 384 and 512 as well, but I think 256 is sufficient for our purpose. The bigger the number, the bigger the key you will have to keep. Uh, otherwise, our application will throw an error of size of our key. Next, we need a security token descriptor that will use all the above variables to define the information we need to generate the token. This class provides a lot of properties uh, that we can use to pass in a token. But we will take very basic information that is mandatory uh, to generate a token. So it should have a subject that we can use to set the claim identity. We will pass the claims variable here that we already have defined to pass the various information about the user. Also, we can set the expire property to tell when this token will get expired. We can pass the date and time here. Let's use date time and bring it from the system. Now we can use UTC now to get the current date and time in UTC format. And we can add the days or minutes to this time to set the expiry date and time. Let's set it to expire after one minute. It is a short time, but we can check if our logic is working fine or not. Otherwise, we will have to wait longer to test this functionality. Next, we need to set the signing credentials that we already have created 
é bom and finally we need a token handler that will be responsible to generate jwt microsoft provides a jwt security token handler let's bring it from system.identitymodel.token.jwt and using this token handler we can generate our token using token handler dot create token and pass the token description that we have created here and it contains all the required information to generate a token finally we can return this token using token handler dot write token to serialize to its uh, compact format now in place uh, of this dummy text we can use our create jwt method and pass the user as parameter here so our token should be generated by this method let me test it if it is working fine or not perfect our token has been successfully generated jwt io provides us an option to decode this token let's copy this and see what we get if we decode it on jwt website paste it here you can see here uh, you will get the decoded form of this jwt token so header is showing the encryption algorithm uh, we have used to generate this token and payload contains the user info that we had provided in claims uh, that is username and user id these three numbers are the dates in unix format this one is the date mentioning that this key is not valid before this time and this one is the date and time when this token was generated and this is the expiry date and time that we have set in our application uh, we set it to expire after one minute and as unix time display time in seconds the difference between this issued at and expiry is exactly 60 seconds so this key uh, will become invalid after this time so you can see uh, this payload can easily be decoded that is why uh, we should never put sensitive user information like credit card number cvv number or any other sensitive info in this token and the last part is signature that makes it reliable it is showing invalid signature because we have not yet provided our secret key here so to validate this key uh, we should have the secret key and as soon as we put our secret key here uh, this key will become valid and if someone tries to modify any part of this key either it is the signature or payload or header part this key uh, will become invalid so now our api is returning jwt on successful authentication next we want to protect our api endpoint from any unauthorized user for example at present any anonymous user can access this get cities endpoint without login let's see how to protect this endpoint from unauthorized access next so to protect all endpoints from unauthorized access in a controller we can use the authorized attribute on the top of the controller like this let's bring it from microsoft.asp.net core.authorization in that way all of these public methods will be accessible to only authorized user in case we want any method uh, to be accessible anonymously we can add allow anonymous attribute on that particular method like this so now in our controller all other methods are protected except this one and this method can be accessed by anyone without login let's comment this out for the moment and see what happens if we try to call this method you can see now it is showing an error that means our authorized uh, middleware kicks in uh, in our request pipeline but we have not yet specified any authentication middleware we are getting this error so let's add authentication middleware first and uh, come back here you must already be aware until now that we need to go to the startup.cs file to enable any middleware in our application so first of all we need to enable authentication service here in this configure service method as we need to add jwt uh, bearer support we need to add a package uh, from nuget 
Microsoft supports various different kinds of authentication packages. Let's select this JWT uh, bearer support and select the package that matches uh, to our .NET version as I am using uh, 3.18 selecting this one. Restore the package. Now we can configure our authentication service to use JWT bearer support using service.authentication method. Here we need to tell uh, what default authentication scheme uh, we want to use. We want to use bearer. Here we can use bearer in uh, double quotes or we can use JWT bearer uh, defaults class and select this constant authentication scheme. Next we need to configure different options to validate token. We have an extension method for the same that is called add JWT bearer. This method provides us an option to add a method to get the JWT bearer options. And we can use this option to set different token validation parameters. Create a new token validation parameter object. We need to bring it from Microsoft.identityModel.token. This class provides uh, different properties to set the required parameter. Although it provides various validation parameter, we will set only a few uh, required parameter here. It should validate issuer signing key. So set it to true. We do not need to validate issuer at present. So set it to false. Also we do not want to validate audience. Set this as well false. We will come back here and set these two properties to uh, true when we deploy it on production. And finally we need to tell what is the issuer signing key. Here we need to set our secret key and it should be the same that we have used uh, to generate our token. Otherwise our signing key never be validated. So let's copy the same from our account controller. Copy this and paste it here before this service method. Add the required reference for encoding. Again uh, we will store this secret key uh, in app setting later in this video. But for now just keep it here uh, to test. Now we can uh, set this key here. So our authentication service has been configured. We can add the same in our configure method. And it is important that this authentication service uh, should be added before this use authorization and after this use course method. So our web API has been configured to use JWT bearer support. And if now we will try to access this method, we get this unauthorized error because this method is not allowed uh, to be accessed anonymously. So in order to access this method, we need to send the token in authorization header here. Let's copy the JWT we have generated by our login method. But this token uh, should have already been expired because we have set an expiry uh, date of one minute only. Let's generate a fresh token. Copy this. And here in the header tab, we need to add an authorization key and we need to send our token here like this bearer and single space and paste the copied uh, token here. So now our authentication middleware will validate this token and then authorization middleware should allow the access of protected method if it gets a valid token on request. Let's try to call this endpoint now. And yep, we got a success message this time and got the cities uh, list in response. Also check if uh, our expiry time is working or not. Let me wait for a minute and see if we are able to access this method using the same token. No, we are getting this unauthorized error as this token has now been expired. Let's update it to expire after 10 minutes or let's set it to expire after 10 days. We should not set that long expiration date in production. And also this should be configurable using app setting instead of hard coding here. 
now the final thing on this video let's add this in app setting instead of hard coding it here we can add a new node here name it app setting we will add more app setting also here later in this tutorial under this app setting we can add multiple settings as a key value pair let's name it key and set the value here you can set your secret key here instead of setting it as a plain text it should be some alphanumeric value that anyone uh, cannot guess there are lot of sites available to generate these random alphanumeric key of different lengths we can use those uh, sites to generate a strong key and use it here now we can access this key in our startup class using this configuration property that is passed by the runtime let's add a variable called secret key and using configuration dot get section we can get the section are defined in app setting dot cs file by passing node name colon name of the key as parameter here and using dot value we can get the value of the required key now we can replace this hard coded value with our variable name let's do the same in our controller as well here we can inject configuration in constructor like this let's bring it from microsoft dot extension dot configuration initialize a field from parameter and here in place of this hard coded key we can use the same code that we have used in startup dot cs file let's copy this code from the startup file and paste it here let's change it to small letter because we have used all small letter as this is the local variable save it and let's test it if everything is working fine so it is returning an unauthorized error because this key was generated using a different security key so we need to regenerate our token and replace this new token in our authorization header perfect it is working fine let's change this method to allow anonymously because this get cities method is something that we want uh, to be shown for anonymous user as well in our application so this is how you can use jwt in your web api for authorization at present we are using this uh, secret key in app setting in plain text but as this is plain text anyone can read uh, this key and share it to someone else also we are storing this password as well in plain text and in case someone gets access to our database uh, they can misuse this information in our next video we will see how to protect our secret key and encrypt our password uh, so that even if someone gets access to our database then also they should not be able to use that password for login so see you in the next video bye bye Take care.